Welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the vehicle power characterization and transmission characteristics. Sometimes vehicle power source that also we are calling as a power plant. Power plant is nothing but a which is giving a power to the remaining section of a vehicle. So first let me discuss about the configuration of vehicle drive train. Already in the last classes we have seen the configuration of a vehicle drive train. This is general configuration. This is we are calling as a power plant. Nothing but which can able to give the power to the transmission system to the wheel so that the vehicle will be moving on the road. When you come to the power plant there are two types of power generators we are using here one is ic engine another one is the lp quick nothing but we are using a motor the main function of this clutch is the it is making a connection and disconnecting the power plant with the transmission system whenever we require there are two types of clutches are there one is manual clutch another one is a automatic clutch the same manner gearbox Generally, the multiple gearbox we are using when the power plant is we are using as a ice engine. Suppose if you use the motor, we are using only the single gearbox. Again, when you come to the gearbox, there are two types of there. One is manual gearbox, another one is the automatic gearbox. This is the driving shaft. This is the differential. This is the axle. These are the two wheels. This is the general configuration of the vehicle drive train. The ideal power plant is nothing but a one which can able to give the at zero speed high amount of the torque nothing but infinity torque when the speed is very high the torque will be come to the zero on the x-axis you have taken the speed on the y-axis you have taken the torque as well as power at zero speed the torque is going to the infinity when the speed is increasing the torque will be decreasing so that the power given by the power plant is constant that is very very important this is the power curve this is torque curve if we see the power curve up to certain speed the power given by the power plant will be increases after that the power is constant over the range of the speed of a engine these are the ideal power plant factors but practically at a zero speed if the power plant is given the infinity torque then it is not good it is damaging the vehicle so how we are going to limit this upper limit and lower limit of a torque means now we are going to see by means of internal combustion engine how we are going to limit the maximum torque developed in a vehicle as well as minimum torque developed in a vehicle this is the vehicle which is going on the plane road this is the tractive force which is given by the propulsion unit this is rolling flexion at the time of starting there is a some amount of adhesive force between the vehicle tires and the road that should be opposite by the tractive force given by the vehicle so that the vehicle will be start moving that force only controlling the maximum torque limit of a vehicle this is the maximum torque limit at the time of starting when the vehicle is running there is some amount of adhesive force is required between the tires as well as the road otherwise the torque is minimum speed is more if it is not factual torque developed in a vehicle if less minimum adhesive force required between the vehicle and the roadway means it is going to damage the vehicle also. so we are going to limit this value lower value of the torque developed in vehicle that is when compared to that value this one, for a given vehicle so in this manner we are going to limit the torque developed in a vehicle now how we are going to produce the tractive effect produced by the ic engine on the x-axis you have taken the speed on the y-axis you have taken the tractive force nothing but a torque also given by the vehicle nothing but this is the practical characters because we are taking the upper limit as well as the lower limit also for the torque but if you use the ic engine at the time of starting the vehicle is required the high amount of start so that we have to use the first gear when you go into the use the first gear in the vehicle then if you see this characteristics the torque will be starting here it will be increasing to the peak value again it is slowly come to the decreases when the speed of the vehicle is increasing then we have to go for the second gear 
if you see the characteristics of second gear this is the minimum value it goes to the maximum value again slowly come and touch us with that this is the engine characteristic if further increasing the speed then you have to go for the third gear where the vehicle does not requires high amount of the torque that's why you're going for the third gear see if you see this character says this is the minimum value of the torque slowly increase the maximum value and the speed will be increases again finally you are coming to the fourth gear in fourth gear the torque developed by the engine will be very very lesser but the speed range is very high so that is the reason that we are using a multiple gears in a vehicle so that the actual characteristics of vehicle will be trying to follow the engine characters how many gears is required for the vehicle so that the resultant characteristics of a vehicle will be following the engine characteristics means then that vehicle fuel consumption is very good so in this manner the tractive force is produced by the ic engine along with a gearbox now we are going to see the typical curves of a gasoline engine nothing but a, that the engine may be the driven by the petrol engine or the diesel engine the speed we have taken on the x axis power we have taken on the y axis the torque also we have taken the one more variable on the y axis this is nothing but a torque speed characteristic for this gasoline engine initially high torque will be developed as the speed is increasing the torque will be reduced if we come to the power initially the power is zero where the speed is very low as the speed is increases the power developed by the engine will be reaches the maximum value after that it will be decreases next we are going to draw the curve of a specific fuel consumption if you see the specific fuel consumption this is the curve at low speeds high value of specific consumption in the same manner high speeds also has a high value of specific consumption this is the point where the specific consumption is a minimum nothing but a what is the meaning of specific fuel consumption made for given distance travel for given speed how much fuel is required that will be denoted by the specific fuel consumption so that is the reason that in our bike and our vehicle also we have a wide range of speed but the fuel consumption is mentioned in that one that is middle at this point if we operate the our vehicle at this speed then we have a very good fuel consumption now if we come to the performance curves of electric motor on the x axis you have taken the speed on the y axis again you have taken the power as the speed is increases the power developed in the motor also will be increases after, after particular value the power is constant up to this value of speed the torque is constant if further increasing the speed the torque will be decreases this is this area is nothing but a constant power region this area is nothing but a constant torque region this speed is nothing but a the speed up to which the torque developed in a motor is a constant that is nothing but a base speed these are the typical performance curves of a gasoline engine as well as a electric now we are going to see the various types of power plants used in a vehicle there are different types of power plants are used one is ic engine second one is a hybrid third one is a electric motor already we have seen this one when you come to the ic engine again there are two types of categories are there one is single ignition second one is a continuous ignition under the single ignition again the two types are there spark ignition and diesel ignition the spark ignition we are using for the petrol vehicle the diesel ignition we are using for the diesel drive vehicle the continuous ignition is nothing but a, when the fuel is burning continuously we are giving the ignition to burn the fuel that's why we are calling it as a continuous ignition this continuous ignition we are using in a aeroplanes now we come to the electric motors broadly classified into the two types one is the dc motor and another one is the ac motor again the dc motor for the classification is there ac motor for the classification is there that we are going to see later the hybrid vehicles are nothing but a, it is a combination of both electric motor as well as a ic engine now we are going to compare the petrol engine and diesel engine now first let me see the what are the advantages of using a petrol engine in a vehicle high power to weight ratio 
This is very very important parameter when you are going to decide the particular vehicle. Nothing but a less weight it is developing a more amount of power. That is achieved by means of a petrol engine mode. It has a good performance, low combustion noise. When the fuel is combusting, the, it does not give any noise. Disadvantages. The quality of the fuel is required. Next, high fuel consumption. For given distance traveled, if we compare the petrol engine and diesel engine, the petrol engine will be taking the high, high fuel when compared to the diesel engine. We know that the cost of the petrol is more when compared to the diesel. So the overall running cost of the petrol for a given distance travel is more when compared to the diesel engine. Next come to the diesel engine. Advantages. The fuel cost is very low. So it does not, it requires a very less amount of running cost. Second, low maintenance due to the absence of ignition system. In case of diesel engine system, there is no ignition required. So it does not require any maintenance. Even the fuel quality is not that much of good, the engine will be working. If we come to the disadvantage, if you use a diesel engine vehicle, it is giving a more particulate emission. Nothing but a very small particles will be emitting into the atmosphere. It is going to affect the humans as well as the ecosystem. It is When it is going to run, it is giving a very high amount of the noise. Now, what are the different parameters we are going to select a particular engine for the particular vehicle? The two types of characteristics curves are used to describe the engine selection. One is torque engine speed characteristics at a full load and full acceleration. Nothing but we have to give the full throttle. Power and engine speed characteristics at a full load and with a full acceleration. These two characters based upon these two characteristics, we are deciding whether a particular engine is working properly or not for a given vehicle. Again, on the x-axis, we have taken the speed. On the y-axis, we have taken the torque as well as the power. This is the curve drawn between the torque to the speed. If we observe this curve, initial speeds, this torque is minimum. It reaches the maximum value. Again, it decreases. The same manner, the power developed in an engine, if we observe means, initially, it is minimum value, slowly increase maximum value, come to the... These curves, we get it for a given engine at a full load with a full acceleration that you have to keep in mind this is the point which is corresponding to the maximum torque again this is the point which is corresponding to the maximum power developed by the engine this is the speed corresponding to the maximum power this is the max point corresponding to the maximum torque developed by the engine now this point is nothing but at this point if you drive vertical line up to the power this point is nothing but a power at a maximum torque Again, at a maximum power, if you draw a one horizontal line, this is nothing but a torque at a maximum power developed in the engine. Now, this is the minimum value of the speed of the engine. This is the speed of engine at a maximum torque. This is the speed of engine at a maximum power. Now, we are going to define the some indices. So many indices are there, but here we have taken only two indices. One is torque elasticity is denoted by the tau. That is equal to T maximum by T of P maximum. T maximum is nothing but a torque developed in, by engine. This is nothing but a torque corresponding to the maximum power. Next, engine speed ratio. It is denoted by letter small v. It is defined as the speed of engine at a maximum power, nothing but this value, divided by the speed of engine at a maximum torque, nothing but this value. When you are producting these two values for a given engine, if we are getting that value is higher, the particular engine is giving a good performance from low and to the medium speed of a vehicle. The, if you use a particular engine in a vehicle, it does not require a more gear changes. Next, velocity limits of a power sources. How much speed is going by the vehicle that will be controlled by the some parameters in a power plant sources. First, we are going to see the motor. Suppose if in the power plant, if you are using as a motor, then it is controlled by the motor heating limit, high centrifugal force is developed in the motor, and insulation breakdown in the motor. If we use the IC engine, valve open and close in time. So, in case of IC engine, 
the burning chamber is there one valve is open so that if it is open the fuel will be go into the engine so how much time it is open and closing and fuel burning time how much time we are allowing to the burn the fuel next fatigue limit nothing but when the fuel is burning high amount of stress will be developed in the chamber that can be limited by the what is the material we, are, we use to manufacture that engine these are the different parameters which are governing the velocity limits of a power sources in a two different cases factor selecting the power plant for the vehicles the first one is the performance factor ic engine has given a better pickup with respect to the electric vehicle suppose in the vehicle if you use the ic engine it will be faster pickup in the vehicle when compared to the electric vehicle but when you come to the economy ic engine has a low initial cost but running cost is very high but if you use the electric vehicle high initial cost but the running cost will be low so that is the reason that for long drive we are using the electric vehicle for the short drives and all we are going for the ic engine vehicles where it requires high pickup for the vehicle environmental friendliness in our vehicle if you use the ic engine definitely it has a the lot of pollution will be emitting into the environmental it is going to affect both ecosystem as well as the human it is not that much of friendly if you use the ev system it is highly friendly with the environment so these are the different parameters we have to take into consideration before going to select a vehicle for a particular uses by the customer if you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my youtube channel so that i am always welcome to answer all your questions